I don't want, thank you, I love that interactiveness, that's great. Okay, so let me see, I do have some slides here, so let me, uh, there we go. Let's, okay, all right, I am Sherry Stegall with Ceasefire Wireless, and I do have one correction to my bio. I realized I had an error that, in it, that we, I'm with Ceasefire, and we, a company that has, is nearly 25 years old, we actually have uh, celebrated our 25th anniversary in February of this year, and we're very, very proud of that. Fact. So, um, uh, and just to expound just a little bit uh, on what um, Rosemary was telling you in my bio, because I, you know, when I go and speak at um, with, to organizations, and I always like to ask, well, what would the audience like to hear about? And um, and she said, well, maybe a little bit about your journey in your career, and then. Um, talk to us about LTE 4G, and so I said, "Great, I'll talk just a little bit about me and um, a whole lot about our LTE and, and our 4G launch in 2012." Last year, our COO Kevin Hankins was here and shared uh, the story of our brand change. We were uh, so for 23 of the 23 and a half years of the 25, we uh, have been known as Cellular South, and then. And um, rebranded ourselves in 2011 and into Ceasefire. So, you know, part of that story is for companies, uh, people to realize that, you know, Ceasefire is not a brand new company. We have been, we are pioneers in the wireless industry and are very, very proud of that fact. So, um, I have been blessed to have a very diversified career with Ceasefire starting in the financial end of the business, and I can remember 19 years ago, um, you know, when I first came to the company, we got financial information, which is important to any company, financial information um, out in uh, three plus weeks, and we cut that back to three days very, very quickly. And, you know, one of the things that has helped us as a company, and you'll hear this as a repeating theme during my remarks today, is that we understand a company like us, Ceasefire, um, and with the, the, the scale of our organization, um, we are very fierce. We are very independent. We have to always stay focused on our customer. Kevin Hankins, in his um, remarks to you last year, telling you about our brand um, launch in 2011, it, he was speaking of our company as being very, one of the constants in our um, company is customer centricity. Always focusing in the customer. We actually have uh, metal stick men, if you will, in every conference room in our organization. I, I say some of my colleagues here, Steve and Jim, you know what I'm talking about, to remind us to always stay focused on the customer. And so I'll be sharing with you today the story of our 4G LTE launch in 2012. And I know many of you, if not all of you, have been involved in some shape, form, or fashion in um, a network launch. And um, I like, very likely 4G. So I, I don't want you to yawn and go, oh, well, you know, just another story. Because we've got some unique things to tell you um, that make ours very differently and all, very different. And, um, and, and also um, show you a little bit more about what can be done uh, for companies who are very focused on their customers and realizing that we are in a hyper-competitive marketplace out there. And I always like to say we're kind of a David and Goliath story, and you all know how that ended, David won. And um, so we, we always look at ourselves in that regard. So um, just briefly to share with you, um, like I said, we did celebrate our 25th anniversary in February. We are led by Humina. Um, our president and CEO, who was one of the ones who turned up that very first tower in 1988. And he has been named as one of the most powerful people in U.S. wireless for the second consecutive year, and then actually in the second year moved up in that ranking. And so, uh, you know, he is a very outspoken advocate for the wireless industry, and, and, and we are blessed to be um, led by an individual who is so... Um, uh, so so forward thinking and, um, and, and very focused on, on making sure that we are doing things today that are going to ensure that we have a not just a surviving business but a thriving business 
five, ten years down the road, always. Uh, he, he said very recently that, um, he said, when, when we were celebrating our 25th anniversary and put together some videos, he said, I'm not a, he said, I don't like talking about the past, but I do love talking about the future and, um, and, and all that is going on. Of course, uh, you heard last year about our story of the name change to Ceasefire, but not just a name change, and that was very important for us. Um, it was um, a rebranding for our company to Personalized Wireless, and you heard some of the details, and I was very pleased this morning to hear that some folks in this very room actually remembered his story that he shared with y'all last year. So we have a story a year to tell, and I will tell you the story about our LTE launch this year. We are a technology company. We are more than just a wireless carrier. We are truly a technology company and becoming more and more diversified every year and are very focused on even more of that for the future. We are headquartered in Ridgeland, Mississippi, so I realize that there are people who are here from as, uh, as far away as 12 different states, and I'm um, very glad that you have come to um, a summit here located in my home state of Mississippi, but um, we are the largest privately held um, carrier in the entire United States and we have currently have 1,200 employees, 75 retail locations. Um, I'm not sure if it's proprietary or not so I won't tell you how many cell sites we have. I didn't get that one cleared but um, if, um, if, if Jim and crew feel comfortable sharing that with you, be happy to do that. And we work um, notably, we are the fourth wireless provider um, in the nation to offer the iPhone and that's no small feat. We began offering that in 2011. So, um, as I share with you our 4G launch journey, I'm going to share with you from a holistic perspective, from the business side. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, in my everyday world, I've worked in just about every uh, part of the company except for the network side of the business, and, and I'm not a network engineer. Um, but what I do know is that um, how important as we focus on our customers, that it is to pull all of this together into a viable product for the consumer and for the business enterprise. Because nothing happens until something, can, you know, that the, the, the device in the palm of the user's hand, um, and it takes the network, it takes uh, the infrastructure, that um, the, the network elements, it takes the devices, it takes all of those things. And those, that's what I want to share with you. This truly was a cast of, of, of thousands, if you will. And um, so the week was September 10th, 2012. And we marked a major milestone in the launch of our 4G, 4G LTE. And what was so unique about this is that this project is commonly known as one that should have been about 18 months. We completed it in nine. That's including the contract negotiations. We spent the first three months in, um, in, in contract negotiations, getting that finalized, and then six months in very rapid execution of that. The highly technical initiative was driven by an aggressive timeline because we knew it had to happen in September. And the complexity of the program, it involved solving technical and device issues for the very first time in the industry. So we th how did we do that? We threw out the rule book, and we had to go off-road in pursuit of a faster path. And our success was dependent on our key vendor relationships, our partnerships, not just a relationship, but that true partnership and the dedication of our people. It was, in, in fact, a monumental effort. It was a major accomplishment that we're very proud of, made possible by all of our people and the strong partnerships with the many vendors who joined us in our commitment to move mountains and make it happen in such a very short time frame. We had to overcome many challenges. And so as I look back at this and I say, okay, well, how did we do this? You know, I'm reminded of something that Humana, our president and leader, said about our company several years back when we were being, our company was being recognized for another award in the, in, in the state of Mississippi as a very innovative company that has um, delivered many accomplishments um, and, and successes. And, and he said, our people are serious, talented, and uncommonly determined. Don't ask them to move a mountain unless you really don't like where that mountain sits. And that's something that was said some years ago 
and we did it in the year of the brand launch, and we did it again last year by delivering in six to nine months what should have taken 18 months. It required collaboration between seven internal project managers, five of them from our PMO group, and two contract PMs in our IT and network areas, and more than 15 external global vendor project managers with companies such as ALU, Jamalto, OpenWave, Samsung, Motorola, Convergis, Cineverse, Vodafone, just to name a few. 15 in all. We had more project managers involved in this project than any other in the history of our company, which is evidence of how huge the coordination requirements were between um, all the different groups. The PMO group, the project managers actually, they were what we call the glue. They provided the glue of organization effective communications, facilitating all the many obstacles and challenges encountered and overcome for all these moving parts and, um, and, and to, to coordinate, track, interpret into plain language, escalate, etc., etc., to ensure that our finish line was met on time with a quality project. Each of our teams actually functioned as a specialty team that brought together on-time completion and launch of the 4G network, 4G devices that worked on that network, supplied in time to our stores. They were actually supplied within 24 hours of our receiving the devices at the warehouse. Our training for our customer touch point reps who were educated and ready to sell this, um, these new devices on this new network operating system and an IT system that properly provisioned, mediated, and built the 4G voice and data. Are you tired yet? <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. So we delivered a multi-million dollar investment to provide four out of every ten consumers and businesses in the state of Mississippi with 4G LTE service offering speeds that are up to ten times faster than 3G, which is so vitally important to what you heard about last year and our branding of personalized services to our, our customers. Um, our network at the time of launch, and that's continuing to grow every day, covered um, 2,700 square miles, but covered a population of 1.2 million and um, 386 cell sites. So the key to how we actually did this was compression, compression, compression. What I said was, you know, as we gave leadership from a project management standpoint to this, you know, it's like you're in the ICU. Ever, anybody ever been in an ICU waiting room? Every hour, what for, for for a loved one, you, you know, if you're the one in ICU, you really don't realize what's going on, but the family members certainly do. And what you know is, if you've been through an experience such as that, is that every hour counts. And it is so vitally, vitally important. And so our, our schedule compression and the techniques that we used for that were so um, critical to us um, getting so, to, Keep, keeping the quality and also overcoming all those obstacles and challenges, those never before been done things that we had to, to accomplish, device development and testing of handsets and data card. So we had simultaneous and continuous development and testing. Instead of sequential, in a perfect world, in an ideal situation, one group does what they're going to do. Finish that, then another group starts that. Well, we had to have all of these things going on simultaneously. The core LTE network equipment installation and upgrade, IT and billing making their changes. And we also accept more risk. Now, that does not mean that we sacrificed quality because we absolutely did not. But we had to be ready, uh, ready and our mindset had to be that we had to do some risk building. And we did. And, and it paid off for us. Our safety was never compromised, but sleep often was. Um, this thing keeps going ahead of me a little bit. Okay. Uh, we grouped our 386 tower sites across Mississippi into 42 market clusters. I, you know, y'all know a whole lot more about this than than, than I, uh, y'all have forgotten more about this than I will ever know about it, about the work needed before site construction there, as well as the work needed before launching a cluster, the drive testing, evaluating data, data speeds, antenna tilt adjustments. Some of the challenges that we encountered were, you know, the, those famous NTPs and construction permits. We had 70 sites that 
we actually owned. So therefore, no NTP was required, which that was a help. So we actually focused on those and prioritized those. And the ballots were um, owned by um, others and controlled by, those, uh, by others, as you see there. And therefore, we did have to have NTPs. And, um, and, and so and we also, what um, network deployment is, is co complete without an Osprey story? Steve Garrett's in the room, everybody knows the Osprey. I mean, here we were in the summertime, headed into the fall, and we had these sites and the environmental issues surrounding the Ospreys. And I did realize during that time, and I was actually uh, doing some Bible reading, and Ospreys are, are noted in Genesis, in the book of the Bible. So that's how long Ospreys have been around, folks. They, they go way, way back to the very beginning of the book of Genesis. And um, so we had nine Osprey and bald eagle nests that, that really hampered our Gulf Coast market launch priorities, but it all worked out, but it made us very, very nervous in that. Um, and then we had over 50 sites that had structural issues that would have required tower work before an NTP could be issued. And so what we did with this was um, we converted them to ground-mounted um, equipment to bypass the tower work until a later date. So it was just, just everything that we could think of to um, get around whatever obstacle or challenge that we had going on there. And um, by doing these things, and, and it was just the little things, stacked up over and over and over again that, and the cumulative effect of this that um, allowed us to launch these um, markets earlier and then some that would come in later. Um, we also had construction work crews that were needed and we arranged, we, we amped up the number of construction work crews that we had outsourced there from, um, from, from one crew to a peak of 31 at one particular time. We also had some rainy weather, of course, and hurricane weather that, um, that, that, that challenged us during that time. But we, we overcame them and we made up for the lost time by adding more work crews um, within the safety guidelines working as, um, as long as, as we could. And we were recruited from as far away as California to satisfy our peak demands. So, you know, this is kind of a, a view here of the internal and the external partners. It was, th this is the internal, and there were many subgroups here, our networks, operations and engineering, IT, engineering and logistics, um, of course, our, our brand people, our, our project managers, our training, and then our externals, 15 in all of these, um, just depicted here um, with um, some of the names that I've already mentioned. And it's just, um, it's amazing the cast of thousands and the orchestration that it took when you, I look back on this in hindsight, because I know each of you in this room, when you're working on something like this, you are responsible for your piece. And it is so, so vitally important. And then when you stop and think about from a macro view that there are so many others that are doing their critically important piece and doing it with, um, you know, in all of, in, in a time frame that pulls this all together um, that in, in just the right time. And we did have it delivered just in time. Um, so I could, you know, I could go on and on about the individual subgroups, network managers work continually with our outside vendors to ensure timely deliver of fiber to sell services for all of our LTE sites. Our operations and engineering teams expanded and augmented our microwave networks to ensure that all the LTE sites had sufficient capacity, even in location where our fiber to sell providers could not service. We had those issues that we um, had to deal with. Um, the technical information group created a new system to actively monitor all the LT network elements and seamlessly integrated that system into the NOP. And um, the technical infrastructure group worked continuously to prepare the core data network for increases in data usage as well as helping ALU and other third party vendors integrate the LTE core with our existing data network. Core networks had to be upgraded, bandwidths expanded, et cetera, et cetera. A roaming department worked with a key nationwide roaming partner to be the first operator in the US to, um, with nationwide LTE roaming platform. So our company is the first company uh, to offer domestic um, LTE roaming with a, 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 um, 
a nationwide um, network provider. So, um, and we began our work, and that work goes on today to develop international roaming functionality that will be delivered to our customers in the very near future. So, you know, that's just one group here. Our network engineering, our site construction group, Jim Shirley's here today. Um, and, um, you know, he, he could stand up and, and talk with you about all the things that he did in terms of um, developing construction um, MOPs, is that right, Jim? MOPs, MOPs, so you know I'm not the technical, I'm on the business side, but ALU PSYOPs team, as well as played a key role in the CABR Bible specifications and sourcing. Um, also worked with ALU's PSYOPs team to um, specify the correct grounding requirements, electrical net connections um, for the remote radio heads, and, and on and on it goes. Site acquisition, we talked about the Ospreys, um, the RF engineering, um, the design engineering group, you know, we are a band class 25, um, uh, um, 4G LTE provider and um, you know the, 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 the cluster maps that were provided daily for that are very uh, were very very important to us in that um, you know our, our RF performance and engineering team um, they were engaged in optimization efforts you know optimization of this was was really really important to us so that we had the proper quality with the ensuring the um, the teams were optimizing and tweaking the LTE network for maximum performance when we launched that's just the network side then we had the IT side the billing teams they had to um, uh, they, they had to uh, provision uh, and work on the billing and the provisioning and the mediation changes all throughout our IT systems. The customer apps teams had to change our, our CRM, our customer relationship management systems, and our IPS inventory systems to support the sales and service and activation of um, 4G LTE services and devices. The web apps team, they were responsible for the website um, pre preparation for the 4G uh, purchase path flows. And, um, and others in that group as well, so as well, and the testing. Oh, and what's a network to a customer without that device? Devices that work in the palm of your hand. Our device engineering team, they're the ones who test the devices. They work so many tireless nights and weekends to test our 4G devices in extremely compressed timelines, as much as 75% compression on their timelines in order to meet the launch date. More than any project in the history of our company, there was more real-time collaboration to troubleshoot between device testing, the network guys, and the IT teams working in sync to simultaneously adjust the network, the UICC, and, and other device elements in order to perfectly deliver for a commercial launch landing on time and with high quality performance. And you've heard me say over and over, on time and high quality. We're never going to sacrifice that. That's who we are, it's in our DNA. And then our device logistics team. They ensured that the supply chain of the devices was accelerated to enable the launch. And um, they actually tested, received the devices from um, international um, suppliers, tested, packaged, shipped, and delivered the initial inventory to the stores for 4G devices in less than 24 hours. That was a fair, a pretty monumental task because we got those out, we got those in just days before our, our launch of our, um, of our network. And then we had the, the training of our um, customer touch points, as I said, that were hundreds as well. So, you know, why do we do this? Because of the exponential growth in data demand out there. In 2012, our data demand um, grew, our data usage actually grew 90%, 90%. 90 and so you see that the customers are demanding more and more uh, speed and, and bandwidth to do all of these things that they want to do, to download apps, game faster, um, open files almost instantly, do real-time video chat, surf the mobile web, and stream movies, music, and more. Who watches movies or, or TV shows on their wireless devices? Yeah, well, it's becoming more and more and more mainstream, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, you just, every, it, it truly, we, we are using computers in the palm of our hand. Because customers are demanding that better video streaming experience, less buffering, um, less latency, 
and increased usability for existing technology for other things like video surveillance, video sharing, and conferencing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, all of these things are, are you know, so vitally important. And what you do in your part each day with whatever company that you work with, it's all for the consumers and who are going to be using the end services of this, um, of, of, of what can be actually done on the devices and all that it takes. And people would be truly amazed at what all it does take when you think about the, the holistic view of this. You know, the wireless industry has really um, come a long, long way in just a few short years in terms of speed. When you think about the 1G and the 2G and then there's 3G and here's 4G, a good visual depiction of that. And, um, and, and, and you are, you've been a part of it. And, and you are to be commended. It's very exciting. I hope you find it as exciting as, as I have to be a part of an industry that moves as fast in such a short, short period of time, just what I've seen in the 19 years that I've been with my company, um, and, and then what you have seen. And then you think about the, what will be in the future and what you can be a part of in the future as it pertains to faster, more speed. Um, it, you know, it's just, it, it's hard to fathom all that we can do. Ten years ago, you would have never imagined that we would be where we are today, right? And I don't think any of us in this room would. And so then when we think about ten years from now, I keep staying focused on the customer, on the consumer, as we do in our company, and then all that it takes to deliver what the consumers, and we find that 18 to 24 year olds are, and how they use their devices, how they want to use their devices today, are the ones that actually drive the direction of the, of, of the industry and where we will go next. So if you want to know where we will be five years down the road, look at what the 18 to 24 year olds are doing and are wanting to do today on their devices. So um, I've enjoyed sharing the story of our 4G LTE launch. Um, we are very proud of the fact that we were able to execute in such a short period of time. But it's not about being proud. It is about um, doing what it takes to deliver to our customers what they need. And, and that fierce focus on our customers is so vitally important to our company at Ceasefire. And I just want to thank um, those in the room and with the companies that that, that you have that help us get there with the, with the required speed to market that it takes to stay viable in this fast-paced industry we find ourselves in. I thank you for your time and attention. For those of you who are going to the, to the clay shoot, I hope you um, have skies that aren't too rainy and cloudy. And uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be here with you today. Thank you. We have this wedding ring still up here. <laughs>